Sydney, uh, CBD, and I'm um, the Aces Hardware Meetup. This is the seventh meetup, and uh, here's the room. I'm giving a talk here tonight, and uh, there's quite a few no shortage people here. So they've got uh, pizza, of course. Hello. Plenty of pizza. There you go. Plenty of pizza with the uh, city in the background. Sorry, you probably can't hear me, but uh, anyway, it is. Uh, we're at Morse uh, Micro, which is a company, and there's Frisia, who invited me. Hi. <laughs> She's the organiser. There you go. You're on my video. <laughs> and we're at uh, Morse, yeah, Morse Micro. They make um, Wi-Fi kind of stuff. I really like uh, some of the artwork. Look at that. Die shot. Really nice. Yeah, you're probably not hearing me. Sorry, shooting this on my shoe phone, but uh, I'm giving a talk along with a couple of other people tonight. And uh, it's supposed to be 160 people registered at the event. And she's just setting up the slides and everything. And yeah, it's really good. I had no idea until um, Frisia actually emailed me and said, hey, you want to come give a talk at this uh, conference, um, the, the, this meetup thing? So, really cool. Uh, does anyone want to go? <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Ben. I have a project called Hexapod Devices. I think I've, I've talked at ACES a couple of times already. I have a few, uh, so the project is to build prototype boards for direct surface mount prototyping. So you can solder SOIC SOT23 QFN32 directly to the board without having to use most of the adapters that you would with through whole uh, projects. Um, I've, I have some boards for free up the back if you'd like to have some. I have some examples for, which I've made by hand. Uh, I have a few new boards. Uh, so if you've picked up one in a previous meetup, I have some new things that you'd like to see. In particular, there was a guy a couple of months ago that asked for, asked for a board to help prototype a boost converter for his uh, game console. I gave him one board, but I have a better board now. This one has a uh, ground plane on the bottom. And I use a biasing pads process to connect alternate pads from the top through to the bottom. And if you want to connect that pad to the ground plane, put a blob of solder on the bottom. So it's great for um, higher frequency stuff like uh, boost and bug converters. So for that guy, I forget your name, sorry. Come and get some bots. <laughs> uh, uh, getting 500 made costs as much as getting 100 made, so I got 500. I don't need 500. <laughs> Come and get some, <laughs> please. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Well, if anyone wants some free boards, go over to the back at the end of this. Uh, if anyone else wants to speak, raise your hand. Yeah, we'll go with you. Hi there. I'm Annette McClelland. I'm from Takuma, and we're improving the ways humans interact with technology. It was great to hear the stories of going uh, seven or eight years, because we're in our tenth year next year. Uh, we started here in Sydney, and what we build is controllers for drones and robots. So, does anyone fly drones in the room? Not too many. Uh, but what we allow to do is do six degrees of freedom with two fingers. So we can go up, down, forward, backward, left, right, yaw. Uh, we've built this mostly in the garage. I've got my engineer co-founder husband, Michael, over there. <laughs> and uh, over the years, we've gone from controlling drones to underwater rovers, uh, to robotic arms, to other devices, and I recently completed a half million dollar contract with the US Department of Defense, which we did over three years out of our garage in Adelaide. So we're not usually here in Sydney, so come have a try of our different remotes. We went from this one to this one in three years, and we've got injection molding machines, 3D printers, all in our garage in Adelaide. Cheers, have a chat. Cool. Does Mr. DS man want to go? <laughs> hey guys, I'm Will. I'm the guy who was asking about the bot converters. Uh, yeah, no, I've been working on a portable platform for the Raspberry Pi 5 compute module. Uh, this is it right now. So this is just a board that integrates a uh, LiPo battery charger, dual uh, MIPI display, 
a modular port for controller expansion and just USB hardware as well. Just onto a compute module 5 for uh, portable applications. This is the first thing I did with it. Uh, yeah, DS, except not DS at all, because it's actually a Linux handheld. Uh, yeah, I'll start it on. 20 second startup time because of SD card. This, oh well. Yeah, live demos, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it is on, but it looks like the screens are dead for some reason. Oh well. Well, this is the other thing I'm working on. Uh, this is supposed to be an ebook that's just crazily overkill. Uh, dual Raspberry Pi's official touch screens. Um, yeah, Raspberry Pi 5 underneath, 6,000 milliamp battery. Uh, yeah, I just wanted an ebook with two screens and color, so I thought, fuck it, I'll make one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, it looks like this thing's dead. But just come to me after if you want to see it, hopefully it works. Uh, yeah, question? Has Nintendo given you a cease and desist yet? <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully, uh, that's all we <laughs> Anyway, thank you. Uh, does anyone else want to go? I'm going to count down from five and then I might call someone out. <laughs> <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Alright, Sean, you're up. Guys, don't know me. Preacher and I are. Part of a little startup. Uh, you may or may not have heard of us uh, on Zero. Uh, basically, we're making a virtual reality haptic hand, uh, mainly for like VR applications at the moment. But we've had a lot of interest in other areas like robotics or like space simulations. But basically, what it is is we're, uh, we're using like Hall effect sensors, so magnet sensing to basically track your hand in virtual space. So normal controllers use buttons to estimate poses. So you'll do like finger gums, uh, like open open hand, close hand, or like you know, thumbs up. But this is like a way to give you a, like a more natural uh, expression in VR. And so this already exists on the market, uh, but it's closer to about like $6,000. And so we're trying to do, you know, 80% of that, 90% of that for, you know, a fraction of the cost. And so we're aiming to do around 250 Australian dollars for a set. Um, but we're also trying to add haptics. And so this is something that actually doesn't currently exist for consumer grade virtual reality haptic controllers. So this is something that we're trying to push. Um, and yeah, that's um, what we're trying to do. If you want to talk more about the uh, nitty gritty on how it works, I'm happy to delve into that. Um, I'm definitely more of the technical side, so sorry, I'm not sharing the vision properly. But, um, <laughs> I tried my best for that. Here's my vision. <laughs> OK, I'm closing it. <laughs> Have a good chat, everyone. Uh, we'll close up by the run night, so get out by then, and we'll all be good. <laughs> See you later.